My guest is Tom Burke, and Tom Burke has the dubious distinction of being the target of an FBI process. You and your wife, Tom, welcome back. You and your wife were subpoenaed by the feds to appear before the grand jury. Now, would you please tell us when and how it came about? Were you served personally by a process server, a sheriff, a federal marshal? What were you doing when you first learned of the subpoena? And how did you initially react to receiving it? Well, it was a Friday, September 24th, and we were getting ready, my wife for work and our daughter for uh, kindergarten. And um, a friend called me from Chicago, and she said she uh, was getting raided by 20 FBI agents in her home, her and her husband. And so I said, well, I better go write a press release about this. And uh, I turned to my wife and said, I think, uh, you know, we were heading out the door with our daughter to take her to school. I said, we better go right away. And so off my wife went in one direction with our daughter, and I went in another with my computer and driving. And uh, I realized I wasn't sure where there was a web cafe to write a press release. And I noticed the car behind me made the two same left turns I did into a warehouse district. So I made another fake turn and went straight, and they did the same. And I realized, oh, they're, they're following me. So I drove around a little bit, and then I called my wife and said I'd meet her at her secure parking lot at her job. And when I turned into there, uh, the, the chase car uh, sped off in a black SUV came right up tight on my bumper and followed me in. So then when I got out, they identified themselves as FBI agents, and uh, they asked us to wait for the other agent to deliver our subpoenas. And that's uh, they started asking us a lot of questions, but we declined to answer their questions. And then... Uh, did, did they tell you what, what they were doing there did they, to deliver your subpoena? Did they tell you why they were there? Sure. They said that, uh, you know, they they had been watching us. They said, we noticed you made a lot of phone calls this morning. And, you know, they seemed to indicate they knew that my wife and I had had a conversation on our phone. Do, do, do me a favor and just speak up. You're, you're speaking a little okay. bit low. I want to make sure the listeners can hear you. So they said that they uh, they let me know that they they had seen me making phone calls and had listened to phone calls that my wife and I had just had. And then they said that they were serving us subpoenas for an investigation of material support for terrorism connected to a group in Palestine called the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, which is a secular uh, leftist group. And then with the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia, which is a revolutionary movement with uh, tens of thousands of fighters in Colombia. Okay, now when they told you this, your wife was with you at the time. You had met her in the secure parking lot? Right. So she she heard this. She was exposed to this at the same time. Right. How did the two of you react? Well, we understand that the FBI has, you know, repressed movements in the past and infiltrated groups, and we know it's wrong, but we know they still do it. So we were actually very calm and the FBI agent who handed us the subpoena was the one who was shaking. I thought that was odd. I think she may have had a sense that what they were doing is, uh, you know, a political act of repression. And so we were calm, and I just asked, are you placing us under arrest? And they said no. And they said, you have to appear at the grand jury in Chicago. And and then, you know, it kind of sank in what they were up to, and we were shocked, frankly, because we've been doing the same type of activity uh, for nearly 25 years. And, you know, we haven't really changed what we do, and we're, we think we're fairly careful about not breaking the existing laws. Well, but we do believe in solidarity with people in other countries. Well, were you familiar with the Palestinian group that they mentioned, and were you at all familiar with the Colombian situation? Yeah, I'm very familiar with both the groups and the situation, and, and did I you participate in movements in did, those countries? You know, did you like participate in any kind of relatively recent protests or activities involving them? In other words, I'm curious at the timing of the subpoenas 
corresponds with, say, some recent, pro- you know, you went, you protested on behalf of Colombia, uh, and the next thing you know, you get the subpoena. I'm wondering if the timing is related. Well, I think it's related to the work we've done for many years, and it, it, the subpoena said we have to give over all communications, emails, cell phones, records, documents, etc., having anything to do with our activity around Colombia and Palestine so, going back to 2001. But my question is, yeah. like you said, why now? Why now? Was there, was there a recent, you know, was there some recent activities involving either the Colombia or a Palestinian uh, uh, organization in which you or your wife were involved? Uh, not with Palestine for sure. Um, I mean, we, we protest when Israel invades Gaza. We protested then. And we and when, donate when was small that? amounts of money to student activists. So, who, so help me out with timing. Like, did, did something happen in your, you know, having thought about it now, did something happen, do you think, to trigger the feds doing this right now? Uh, there's a lot of speculation about that. Some people say it's, you know, because, because the economy's not recovering and the Palestine peace process isn't going well. Other people think it has to do with political maneuvering amongst Republicans and Democrats, you know. Some people. What do you, what do you think? What do you and your wife think? I think it's a long-term campaign that goes back to the Republican before the Republican convention and that we've angered them with our effective anti-war organizing and then the solidarity work. I, in particular, have done work protesting a trial that happened in Washington, D.C., where the U.S. government put Ricardo Palmera, who's a FARC uh, peace negotiator, they captured him in Ecuador, and um, the U.S. did, they had to inform the Ecuadorian government they had taken someone off their streets. And, um, you know, they put them on trial in Washington, D.C., and we protested those trials. Um, they ended up having to hold four trials to convict them on one charge, you know. So that angered them for sure, you know. They, they told us they were angry at the trials that we were protesting outside. Oh, they actually told you that? Yeah, they entered our flyers into evidence suggesting that our protests were a form of jury tampering. Judge Hogan did this. Oh yeah, they're trying to do that also. That's that's one of their that's like that's like uh uh um, arresting you for trespassing on public property when you're a member of the public. It's that it, variations on a theme. That's Exactly. That, yeah, that particular tactic. Um But in fact what in fact what happened was the judge had to recuse himself. He had to step down from the bench because it was actually him and the prosecutor who had coordinated the, the talk to the jury foreperson from the first trial where it ended in a hung jury. So it was the judge who had uh, misstepped, you know. Well, are we surprised at that? Um, I'm curious if you mentioned that you were on the phone with a friend who had called you to tell you she was being right there and then. She was being served by the FBI, uh, and that same day is the day you found yourself being followed. Do you, do you believe that this was like some operation, or right, let's flip the switch and go pick them all up at the same time? Is it one of those kind of situations, as far as you could tell? Absolutely. They raided two homes in Chicago, and she had 20 agents in her house, and they took everything that they wanted, computers, cell phones, passports, they put children's artwork in their boxes. They took 28 boxes in two vans out of their home. And they raided five homes in Minneapolis at the same time with armed agents at one house and snipers on the roof across the street of uh, the editor of Fightback newspaper. And when they did this, they absolutely did it with precision timing. And I don't know, maybe they were a little late to our house or they wanted to watch how we responded, but. I uh, think it was good to leave the house and. Uh, Yo, it sounds like yeah, it sounds like you did very very well. Is your wife an active, a fellow activist? Did she participate with you at any of the events that you participated, or is their interest in her 
you know, uh, do they have specific interest in her? Or is it just because she's your wife? Well, she seems to think she used to be more active, and she hasn't really been active for about six years. And so she thinks it's more because she's my wife and, you know, she supports me financially, and that's uh, that's our that's our uh, marriage, you know. <laughs> so, right. When are, you, when are you scheduled to appear before the grand jury? Well, I was scheduled for October, but um, all of us so far – have decided to not appear at the grand jury and to not speak. In no, wait, you were scheduled for October when? October last year, this year? October 19th last year. And you did but not was, appear? Right. The original 14 were due to appear on October 14th. Did they, did, did they issue a warrant for your arrest? No, because we we signed a letter with our lawyers, each of us individually, saying that we would not be appearing, we would take the Fifth Amendment because we we don't, uh, you know, we don't wish to, uh, you know, talk and end up getting ourselves in trouble somehow. Now, I, I had th- I had principle, thought, we're not going to speak anyway. I anyway. think that's great, but I had thought that if you disregarded a federal grand jury subpoena, they would pick you up and put you in jail immediately. No, that's not how this works. Because we've informed them that we didn't intend to. And so the, they can either, uh, you know, activate it and say you must appear, or they can um, offer you immunity to appear, or they can just put it on the shelf. And with, with us, they just put it on the shelf. Except in December, they re- reactivated three subpoenas for three of the women in Minnesota who mainly do Palestine solidarity work. And so their lawyers have been in discussions, and n- nothing has come of it so far. Well, but have you, have you or your wife heard either together or separately from them since? Because so, I, I, uh, you obviously answered one of my questions, which is did you get help from, help from an attorney or a non-attorney law counselor? Obviously mm-hmm. you did. Have you, since your refusal to appear, have you heard from them directly or indirectly? 